Have you ever wondered what kind of transformations occur when you start with young white tea and it transforms into aged white tea? Well, the characteristics of young white tea are kind of sunshine, honey type flavors and fragrances, whereas aged white teas are more lotus leaf and Chinese medicinal herbs and jujubes. There's a saying that is yi nian cha, san nian yao, qi nian bao, which means one-year-old white tea is just regular tea, whereas the three-year-old is medicinal and the seven-year-old becomes precious. Well, monks have known this for a long time and they would use aged white tea to help villagers cure some of the sicknesses that would come along and it worked quite well. That's why it has a long history of medicinal use in China. Well, there's a lot of molecular changes that happen during this time. But first, let's take a quick look at one of the differences between green tea and black tea and white tea and puar tea. It's mostly in the processing, and you'll notice that the last step for puar tea and white tea is sun drying, but they're sun dried in a humid place, and you never get to bone dry. You're going to get to maybe 8, 9, 10, 11% water content, which is a decent amount. But with green tea and black tea, it's either baked in an oven till it's bone dry or it's cooked in a wok till it gets bone dry. And that's about 3% water content, which is really, really desiccated. What that means on the molecular level is, okay, here's two molecules, and in order to become a new, interesting, larger molecule, they need to touch. But when they're too dry, they're stuck. They don't move. But in aged puar teas and white teas, there's still enough water in there that these molecules can jiggle around and interact with each other and become new, more interesting molecules. Whereas in green tea and black tea, they're just going to kind of get oxidative degradation, which means you'll kind of break the molecules down and they'll go from something really good to something not so good. Let's take a look at one of the molecules. So the one I'm drawing right now is just one of the catechins. Now these are antioxidants in tea and these are some of the things that are being studied for their health benefits. And this particular one is just a generic one. I'm putting these R's in here and the R just means any any particular functional group. The O is the oxygen and hydrogen. This is an O. All these corners here are, are carbons. So this particular molecule, it could be epicatechin, it could be epigallocatechin gal, it could be any of them. So let's take a look at another molecule that's going to interact with this. And this one is called L-theanine. L-theanine is in tea and it has a really nice calming effect on people. It's actually an amino acid and this particular one is not made into proteins, but the majority of the amino acids are made into proteins. Just like starches are made of sugars, proteins are made of amino acids. So what happens is you've got these two molecules, they're not touching each other, but then they start to jiggle a little bit closer and closer and they can get an interesting reaction. That is, they'll form, this will form a cyclic molecule coming in here. It'll kick off this CO2 kick off this nitrogen here and what we'll end up with is this novel molecule which is actually used as one of the ways to test if you've got real aged white tea or not. Now being as this is still a catechin, it still has antioxidant properties but it's also under research for additional health benefits. But this is only in real aged white tea. And why do I say real aged white tea? Because unfortunately, fake white tea exists, aged fake white tea. So the final processing in white tea, actually, I'm sorry, I shouldn't say the final, there is never a processing step in which you roll the leaves. But in fake white tea, fake aged white tea, they do. They will roll the leaves and it'll make it look and smell and taste a little bit like aged white tea. But there is one thing, before you invest a lot of money into aged white tea, taste it. See if there is any bitterness and astringency on the last few infusions. If there is, don't buy it because it's for sure counterfeit. It's not the real deal. So this particular molecule is called 8C-N-ethyl-2-perolidinone substituted flavan 3 alls It's actually a lot easier to draw than it is to say. It's a little bit of a tongue twister. 
So next time you're drinking some aged white tea, take a cup and say to yourself, mmm, 8C N ethyl 2. Actually, no, don't. Don't say that. Just drink it and say, mmm, jujubees.